Dnyaneshwar IAST Jnanasvar also referred to as Jnanashwar Jnanadeva Daniandev or Mali 1275 to 1296 was a 13th century Marathi saint poet philosopher and yogi of the Nath tradition in his short life of 21 years, he authored Dnyaneshwari, a commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, and Amruthanubhav. These are the oldest surviving literary works in the Marathi language, under the patronage of the Yadava dynasty of Devagiri, and these are considered to be milestones in Marathi literature. Dnyaneshwar's ideas reflect the non-dualistic Advaita Vedanta philosophy and an emphasis on yoga and oneness of Vishnu and Shiva. His legacy inspired saint poets such as Eknath and Tukaram, and he has been one of the foundations of the Varkari Krishna Bhakti movement tradition of Hinduism in Maharashtra. Topic Biography Topic Background Dnyaneshwar was born in 1275 on the auspicious day of Krishna Janmashtami in a Marathi-speaking Dashastha Brahmin family in a Pegaan village on the bank of Godavari River near Pathan in Maharashtra during the reign of the Yadava king Ramadevarava. The kingdom with its capital Devagiri enjoyed relative peace and stability. The king was a patron of literature and arts. Biographical details of Dnyaneshwar's life are preserved in the writings of his contemporary Namdev and his disciples Satamalanath and Sachchidanand. The various traditions give conflicting accounts of details of Dnyaneshwar's life. The date of composition of his work Dnyaneshwari however is undisputed. According to the more accepted tradition on Dnyaneshwar's life, he was born in 1275 CE and he attained Sanjiwan alive Samadhi in 1296 CE. Other sources state he was born in 1271 CE. Topic. Life The biographical details of Dnyaneshwar's short life of about 21 years are contested and its authenticity is in doubt. The available accounts are filled with hagiographic legends and miracles he performed, such as his ability to make a buffalo sing the Vedas and humble a yogi by riding a moving wall. According to the accounts that have survived, Dnyaneshwar's father Vithalapant was the Kulkarni hereditary accountant, usually Brahmin, who maintained land and tax records in villages of a village called Apegaon on the banks of the Godavari River in Maharashtra, a profession he had inherited from his ancestors. He married Rakumabai, the daughter of the Kulkarni of Alandi. Even as a householder, Vithalapant longed for spiritual learning. His disillusionment with life grew as a result of the death of his father and because he had no children from his marriage. Eventually, with his wife's consent, he renounced worldly life and left for Varanasi to become a sannyasin renunciate. According to another version of these events, the ancestors of Vithalpant, according to the narration in Bhaktamal, published by Gita Press Gorakhpur, were native of Mathila. The great grandfather of Sri Dnyaneshwar, Sri Haranath Mishraji, was a devotee of Bhagwan Pundariknath, hence he settled in Alandi, near Pandharpur. The grandfather of Dnyaneshwar Sri Righunath Mishraji was also a spiritual and devotee of Bhagwan. Sri Vithalpantji son of Sri Righunath Mishraji, later on, married Rukmini Bai, daughter Sri Shidopantji. 
Once a saint came to the house of Ithilpant, and informed him that he is proceeding to Kashi, to take darshan of great son Sri Ramanandacharya. Sri Vithal Pant accompanied him. On the way, he realized that the son accompanying him none but Vishwamitraji. Ultimately he reached Kashi in the ashram of the great San Sri Ramanandacharyaji where he took Diksha from him and he was renamed as Bhavananji. Swami Sri Ramanandacharyaji while on the way to Rameshvaram stayed for some time at Alandi, where Rukmanibai met him. Swamiji on learning that his disciple Sri Bhavananji is the husband of Rukmanibai, he by his yogi sadhana ordered Sri Bhavananji to return to Grihastha ashram. In obedience of orders of his guru, Sri Bhavananji returned and continued his family life. According to another version of these events, Dnyaneshwar's father Vithalapant came from a long line of teachers of the Nath Yogi sect and being deeply religious, he went on a pilgrimage to Varanasi. There he met a guru spiritual teacher, decided to renounce without his wife's consent. Vithalapant was initiated as a sannyasin by his spiritual teacher, Rama Sharma, who is also called Ramananda, and Rasimhashrama, Ramadvaya and Shripad in various sources. He was not Ramananda, the founder of the Ramanandi Sampradaya, when Ramashrama discovered that Vithalapant had left his family behind to become a monk, he instructed Vithalapant to go back to his wife and perform his duties as a householder. After Vithalapant returned to his wife and settled down in Alandi, Rakumabai gave birth to four children. Nivrutinat, 1273 CE, Dnyaneshwar, 1275 CE, Sapan, 1277 CE, and Muktabai, 1279 CE. Orthodox Brahmins of the day saw a renunciate returning to his life as a householder as heresy. Dnyaneshwar and his brothers were denied the right to have the sacred thread ceremony for the full admission to the Brahmin caste. According to Pawar, this meant excommunication from the Brahmin caste. Vithalapant eventually left the town for Nashik with his family. One day while performing his daily rituals, Vithalapant came face to face with a tiger. Vithalapant and three of his four children escaped, but Nivrutinat became separated from the family and hid in a cave. While hiding in the cave he met Gahaninat, who initiated Nivrutinat into the wisdom of the Nath yogis. Later, Vithalapant returned to Alandi and asked the Brahmins to suggest a means of atonement for his sins, they suggested giving up his life as penance. Vithalapant and his wife gave up their lives, within a year of each other by jumping into the Indriyani in the hope their children might be able to lead lives free of persecution. Other sources and local folk tradition claim that the parents committed suicide by jumping in the Indriyani River. Another version of the legend states that Vithalapant, the father, threw himself into Ganges River to expiate his sin. Dnyaneshwar and his siblings were accepted by and initiated into the Nath Hindu live tradition to which their parents already belonged, where the three brothers and the sister Muktabai all became celebrated yogis and bhakti poets. Topic. Travel and Samadhi After Dnyaneshwar had written Amruthanubhav, the siblings visited Pandharpur where they met Namdev, who became a close friend of Dnyaneshwar. Dnyaneshwar and Namadev embarked on a pilgrimage to various holy centers across India where they initiated many people into the Varkari sect. Dnyaneshwar's devotional compositions called Abhangas are believed to have been formulated during this period. 
On their return to Pandharpur, Dnyaneshwar and Namadev were honoured with a feast in which, according to Bahirat, many contemporary saints such as Garoba the Potter, Sanvada the Gardener, Chokoba the Untouchable, and Parisa Bhagwat the Brahmin participated. Some scholars accept the traditional view that Namdev and Dnyaneshwar were contemporaries, however, others such as W. B. Patwardhan, R. G. Bhandarkar and R. Bharadvaj disagree with this view and date Namdev to the late 14th century instead. After the feast, Dnyaneshwar desired to go into Sanjeevan Samadhi, a practice to voluntarily die after entering into a deep meditative state state. Preparations for the Sanjeevan Samadhi were made by Namdev's sons. Regarding Sanjeevan Samadhi, Dnyaneshwar himself has emphatically talked about the relationship between higher awareness and light or pure energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. On the thirteenth day of the dark half of the Kartik month of the Hindu calendar, in Alandi, Dnyaneshwar, then was twenty-one year old entered into Sanjeevan Samadhi. His Samadhi lies in the city's Vara temple complex in Alandi. Namdev and other bystanders grieved his passing. According to tradition, Dnyaneshwar was brought back to life to meet Namdev when the latter prayed to Vithoba for his return. Dalmar writes that this testifies to the immortality of genuine friendship and companionship of noble and loving hearts. Many Varkari devotees believe that Dnyaneshwar is still alive. Topic. Miracles Many miracles came to be associated with Dnyaneshwar's life, one of which was the revival of his disciple Satchitanand's corpse. Fred Dahmer summarizes one of these legends as follows from the hagiography by Mahipati, at age 12, Dnyaneshwar with his impoverished and outcast siblings, went to Pathan to plead mercy from Pathan priests. There, they were insulted and ridiculed. As the children were suffering the bullying, on a nearby road was a man who was violently lashing an old buffalo, and the injured animal collapsed in tears. Dnyaneshwar asked the buffalo owner to stop out of concern for the animal. The priests ridiculed him for being more concerned about a beast and unconcerned about the teachings of the Vedas. Dnyaneshwar retorted that the Vedas themselves held all life to be sacred and a manifestation of the Brahman. The outraged priests pointed out that his logic implied that beasts should be able to learn the Vedas as well. An undeterred Dnyaneshwar then placed his hand on the buffalo's forehead and it started reciting a Vedic song in a deep voice. According to Fred Dalmar, one may not be concerned whether this story accurately reflects Dnyaneshwar's biography, the story does have symbolic significance in the same manner as the story about Jesus in Jerusalem in Matthew chapter 3 verse 9. In another miracle, Dnyaneshwar was challenged by Changdev, an accomplished yogi who rode on a tiger with his magical powers, to replicate this feet. Dnyaneshwar humbled Changdev by riding on a moving wall. Dnyaneshwar's advice to Changdev was given in 65 verses called the Changdev Pasasthi. Changdev became a disciple of Dnyaneshwar's sister Muktabai. Writings <laughs> <laughs> According to B. P. Bahirat, Dnyaneshwar was the first philosopher who wrote in the Marathi language. 
At about age 16, he composed Dnyaneshwari in the year 1290, a commentary on Bhagavad Gita which later became a fundamental text of the Varkari sect. His words were recorded by Sachidananda, who agreed to become Dnyaneshwar's amanuensis. Dnyaneshwari was written using the ovi, a meter, which was first used to compose women's songs in Maharashtra, of four lines where the first three or the first and third lines rhyme and the fourth line has a sharp and short ending. According to W. B. Patwardhan, a scholar on Dnyaneshwar, with Dnyaneshwar the ovi trips, it gallops, it dances, it whirls, it ambles, it trots, it runs, it takes long leaps or short jumps, it halts or sweeps along, it evolves a hundred and one graces at the master's command. His first text Dnyansvari was in the vernacular Marathi language, as opposed to the classical Sanskrit language. According to Bhagwat, like other Bhakti poets, Dnyaneshwar choice of the vernacular language was an important departure from the prevailing cultural hegemony of Sanskrit and high caste Hinduism, a trend which continued with later Bhakti poets across India. Dnyaneshwar is to the Marathi literature what Dante is to the Italian, states Bhagwat. According to tradition, Nivrutinath was not satisfied with the commentary and asked Dnyaneshwar to write an independent philosophical work. This work later came to be known as Amruthanubhava. Scholars differ on the chronology of the Dnyaneshwari and Amruthanubhav. Patwardhan has argued that Amruthanubhav is an earlier text than Dnyaneshwari because the latter is richer in use of metaphors and imagery, and displays greater familiarity with many different philosophical systems, such as Samkhya and Yoga. However, both Bahirat and Renata disagree with this view pointing out that in Amruthanubhava, author displays familiarity with involved philosophical concepts such as Mayavada and Shunyavada, and while the text has simpler language, it reveals Dnyaneshwar's philosophical depth. Dnyaneshwar's devotional compositions called Abhangas are believed to have been formulated during his pilgrimage to Pandharpur and other holy places when he got initiated into the Varkari tradition. <laughs> <laughs> Influences The Mahanubhava sect and the Nath Yogi tradition were two prominent movements during Dnyaneshwar's time that influenced his works. Mahanubhavas were devotees of Krishna who disregarded the caste system, the Vedas and the worship of the deity Vitala. Dnyaneshwar differed significantly from Mahanubhava's religious precepts. His thought was founded on the philosophy of the later Vedic texts such as the Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita, and devotion to Vitala formed the cornerstone of the egalitarian Varkari sect founded by Dnyaneshwar. However, the literary style adopted by Mahanubhava writers influenced Dnyaneshwar's works. According to R. D. Renata, Dnyaneshwar stands to Mahanubhavas just in the same relation which Shakespeare stood to Elizabethan writers." Dnyaneshwar was initiated into the Nath Yogi tradition by his brother Nivrutinath. Sometime after the death of their parents, Sapana and Muktabai were initiated into the tradition by Dnyaneshwar himself. Founded by Gorakshanath, the Nath Yogi sect had introduced the system of Hatha Yoga, which emphasized on yogic poses and physical fitness. Gahaninath, a disciple of Gorakshanath, had initiated Nivrutinath into the Nath Yogi tradition. 
Dnyaneshwar's non-dualistic philosophy, usage of a vernacular language in his writing and an emphasis on yoga and oneness of Vishnu and Shiva were his inheritances from the Nath Yogi tradition, the values of universal brotherhood and compassion espoused in his works came from his interactions with the devotional Vitala sect, a tradition which was already in existence during Dnyaneshwar's time. J. N. Farquhar also notes the influence of Bhagavata Purana on Dnyaneshwar's poetry. Topic: Philosophy. Topic: Ontology and epistemology. Dnyaneshwar takes up the examination of being or Brahman in Amruthanubhava. He considers being to be the substratum of thought which enables thought and cognition. Since being is prior to thought and concepts, it is distinct from Kantian categories, and methods of thought such as epistemological analysis cannot be applied to it. Dnyaneshwar believes that reality is self-evident and does not require any proof. It antedates dualistic divisions into knower and known, existence and non-existence, subject and object, knowledge and ignorance. Dnyaneshwar highlights the limitations of the traditional epistemological methods pramanas used in Indian philosophy. He points out that any perception is validated only by another deeper understanding, while in establishing the rationality of reason, reason itself is transcended. Dnyaneshwar even cautions against reliance on scriptural testimony, which is accepted as a valid source of knowledge by philosophers of Vedanta and Mimamsa schools of philosophy. Scriptural validity, to him, stems from its congruence with experiential truth and not vice versa. Ethics <inaudible> 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 Dnyaneshwar's moral philosophy comes out in his exposition of the 13th of Bhagavad Gita, in his commentary on the book Dnyaneshwari. He considers humility, non-injury in action, thought and words, forbearance in the face of adversity, dispassion toward sensory pleasures, purity of heart and mind, love of solitude and devotion towards one's guru and god as virtues, and their corresponding moral opposites as vices. A pessimistic view of one's life is considered as a necessary condition for spiritual growth in Dnyaneshwari. Dnyaneshwar writes that saints do not perceive distinctions and are humble because they identify all objects, animate or inanimate, with their own self. Devotion to Guru occupies an important place throughout the commentary. Many of its chapters begin with an invocation to his guru Nivrutinath, who is eulogized by Dnyaneshwar as the person who helped him cross the ocean of existence. The discussion on virtue and vices continues in his elucidation of the 16th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, where virtues and vices are called divine heritages and demonic heritages respectively. Divine heritage comprises fearlessness, which comes from a belief in unity of all objects, charity, sacrifice, which comes from performing one's duties and compassion in addition to virtues already enumerated, while demonic heritage consists of six vices. Ignorance, anger, arrogance, hypocrisy, harshness and pride. The doctrine of karma yoga in the Bhagavad Gita is resurrected in Dnyaneshwari and its utility as a means of achieving actionlessness through action and in establishing harmony between the two is examined. 
In the fourth chapter, the ideal karma yogi's actions are compared to the apparent movement of the sun, which while appearing to rise and set is actually stationary. Similarly, a karma yogi, though appears to act, doesn't really act. Performance of one's duties, acting without egoism, renunciation of the fruits of one's actions and offering one's actions to God are four ways which, according to Dnyaneshwar, result in actionlessness and self-realization. Dnyaneshwar's metaphysical conclusion that the world is a manifestation of the divine, and not an illusion, also creates an ethical framework which rejects renunciation and recommends performing one's duties and actions in the spirit of worship. Traditional Indian scriptures see RDA, a Hindu theological term similar to Dharma, as a natural law that governs both the cosmos and human society. Performance of one's duties to uphold social institutions, such as marriage and family, thus becomes imperative, and duty overrides individual freedom. Dnyaneshwar is in agreement with tradition, he believes that divine order and moral order are one and the same and are inherent in the universe itself. He, therefore, recommends that all social institutions be protected and preserved in their totality. However, when it comes to the institution of caste, his approach becomes more humanitarian and he advocates spiritual egalitarianism. Reception and legacy Elements of Dnyaneshwar's life and writings, such as his criticism of parochialism of the priestly elite, a celebration of the family life and spiritual egalitarianism, would shape the culture of the Varkari movement. According to Dalmar, Dnyaneshwar's life and writings have developed into primary exemplars of genuine religiosity for the Varkari movement, as well as crucial sources and focal points of bhakti devotion." Devotees of the Varkari sect in the Hindu Shaka month of Ashad join an annual pilgrimage called the Wari with symbolic sandals called Paduka in Marathi of Dhyananeshwar carried in a palki, from Dnyaneshwar's shrine in Alandi to the Vitala temple in Pandharpur. The Padukas sandals of Dnyaneshwar are carried in a palki palanquin for the Dnyaneshwar inspired works of later poet saints of the Varkari movement. His philosophy of Chidvilas was adapted by Varkari writers, such as Namdev and Eknath, to their own works. Amruthanubhava's influence is visible in Eknath's Hastamalak and Swamsuka. Tukaram's works imbibe and explain Dnyaneshwar's philosophical concepts such as the refutation of Mayavada. Many writers, beginning with Eknath, wrote commentaries were written on Amruthanubhava. However, prominent historians of Indian philosophy such as Sarvpali Radhakrishnan and Surendranath Dasgupta who were primarily focused on Sanskrit. Topic. Works Undisputed authorship Dnyaneshwari or Bhavarthdipika Amruthanubhava or Anubhavamrita Changdev Pasashti Harapath Abhangas works attributed to Dnyaneshwar Commentary on Yoga Vasistha Pavana Vijaya Panzakarana <laughs> Drashtanta and first picture 
Shri San Dianwayaneshwar Maharaj has given drushtant to San Gulabrao Maharaj when he was just 19 years old and given him a mantra of his own name Swanam. After that drushtant, the first ever photo picture of San Dianwayaneshwar Maharaj has been drawn by an artist based on the directions of Gulabrao Maharaj. Even today one can see the same photo frame at Samadhi Temple Alandi, Maharashtra. San Gulabrao Maharaj is also known as Pradnichikshu Madhiradvaitacharya Pandoringnath Maharaj. See also Bhakti movement Chokamela Eknath Janabai Muktabai Namdev Nivrutinath Pantharpur Wari, the largest annual pilgrimage in Maharashtra that includes a ceremonial palki of Tukaram and Dianwayaneshwar. San Mat San Soyarabai Sapan Tukaram San Gulabrao Maharaj <laughs>